in a period of three months, I was able to increase my IQ by seven points. And it's not an accident. I had an exact protocol, which I'm gonna tell you now in this video. So first thing which you need to understand, what is actually an IQ? Because most of people think that with a higher IQ, all your life becomes easier. But in the easiest possible words, higher IQ means that you can just learn things faster and understand them better on a deeper level, be able to see connections which people with a lower IQ cannot see between a complex things. And this is basically a high IQ. And you absolutely don't need a genius level of intelligence to be successful, to earn a lot of money. And in a lot of cases, it can actually disturb you because you stop to see the sense of life, you become more depressed and whole cascade of negative feedback loop is started. Also, what is very interesting and what was rewarded in this year's anti-noble event is the fact that people who are praised for their high intelligence, high IQ, are often seen as more narcissistic, have huge ego and their actions completely do not match their intelligence. So if you want to have high IQ, to only have superior level of intelligence compared to other people, it's not gonna give you anything to your life despite being narcissistic and egocentric. So if we already know this kind of basics, let's go further. Our IQ is not stable. We don't get it while we are born. It can change through our lifetime. And interestingly, genetics do not have as high impact as most of people think. There were many studies where scientists, for example, proved that every new year of education can increase IQ level by five points or prove an impact to intelligence by, for example, not in your diet. And also there is a whole bunch of examples of people who could increase their intelligence level massively through their lifetime, even though they were not born as geniuses. One of the very prominent cases is, for example, Marcin Kovacic, which is a Polish 14 times master of solving Rubik's Cube game on time from only his memory with closed eyes. You can see his job, he's amazing at doing that. But he was doing very legit IQ tests in Mensa. And once, when he started to do this all memory games, he had an IQ level of maybe slightly over average. But then, when he measured it after years of competing in different kinds of competitions like this, his IQ level was as high as they couldn't even measure that precisely. He was over the norms. So as you can see, the IQ is of course partly genetic, but huge part of that we can actually shape by ourselves. IQ is not a single measure. To a total score, it comes a lot of different parts of intelligence, including numeral intelligence, reasoning skills, skill of spatial memory, spatial intuition. So to increase your IQ massively, you need to basically work on all of them. But there is one, one single part of intelligence, which is one of the most important between all of these parts. And it's an spatial intelligence. Because think, what was the most important part for the biggest part of history of human beings on this planet? It was a spatial memory. Of course, it had to be. Because when we got lost, when we lost our tribes, when we couldn't recognize where is a good place to hunt where we were yesterday or where is a good place where we were collecting raspberries yesterday, we wouldn't be able to survive. So through an evolution, our brain were created in this way to actually benefit the most from this part of intelligence. And that's why as human beings, we are so good in memorizing different places. And what is interesting, spatial intelligence is one of the only part of intelligence which is proven right now by science that it can improve through all your life, not only early childhood, not only teenage years, but even when you are already adult person who just want to improve. And to improve in this field, you need to do what 90% of memory competition members do to memorize huge numbers, P numbers after the dot, elements from a Rubik's cube, etc. So we need to use a palace of memory, which is really the most efficient way to memorize anything. In a method of palace of memory, you imagine the place where you've already been a few times and which you know quite good. It can be your school, your house, house of your friend, grandparents, whatever. And you imagine step by step that you put some imaginary scene in different parts of this building, of this area, 
which you just imagined. And then you create associations in your brain between a place and between the things which you want to study. So what you need to do is to basically learn new things, learn new languages, skills by using a palace of memory. Of course, on the YouTube, you can find a whole bunch of videos how to do a good palace of memory. I will also do this kind of video in the, in the future and you can find I already did them also in the past where I explained quite a little bit how the pass of memory works. If you do this consistently, because consistency is really the key to everything, including that, because if you once learn for some exam, it's not gonna give you a lot. But if you every day spend few minutes, just few minutes on doing that, you will really see a difference. And it's basically that. It's the way to improve your intelligence the fastest from the all things which you can imagine. And it's one of the only part of intelligence which is really proven by science that can be improved even in adult life. Of course, you can start to play instruments. Yes, it's a great thing. It, it creates more connections between left and right part of the brain, but it works mostly for children. It's not, scientists didn't see any connections between adult people and uh, increasing their intelligence by playing instruments. But this is something which even adult people can improve in. And another thing is to stop sabotage your intelligence. Because what a lot of people do is to voluntarily decrease their IQ level daily. For example, if your first meal of the day is full of carbs, how you want to function on a higher possible level? Carbs limits a secretion of orexin in your brain which is responsible for having energy, having clear thoughts, thinking correctly. And honestly, I did it for the most part of my life. I ate a breakfast which was full of carbs, I ate a dinner which was full of carbs, and how could I even function properly? So the thing which I did after learning about all orexin functions and how orexin really works, I cut down all carbs before an evening. Yes, in evening, for the supper, for the last meal of the day, you can eat carbs because they have this ability to make you sleepy, decrease the level of orexin secretion in your brain, and it's really great thing to go and fall asleep. But if you want to be full of energy, rather than a meal which is a full of carbs, choose meal which is a full of protein and healthy fats. Because actually, you know what protein have? The protein have ability to increase secretion of orexin in your brain, which is responsible for eliminating brain fog, for having energy during the day and for acting properly. So, so the first thing which I do from my meals, I don't eat any carbs until the noon and afternoon. My first meal of the day are proteins with healthy fats because they increase my secretion of orexin, which can improve the functioning of my brain. I can say that these two things were the reason why in three months of doing these things, my IQ grew by seven points. And it wasn't some bullshit online test with 10 questions. It was really online test did by around 100,000 people. So the scores were really legit. And I already recorded a video how the high IQ had influence on my life before. So you can watch it below. But for now, thanks a lot for watching this video. See you later. Ciao, ciao.